conversation about ideas important to the middle class and those struggling to make it. Uh, this campaign has been based on a fairly simple premise, and that is that citizens in New York are interested not just in the old way of politicking where you round up endorsements, where you talk about polls and fundraising, but you talk about the ideas that animate their lives, you talk about the challenges that they face. We're here in Long Island City today to talk about more of these ideas as I'm now going to be publishing my second book called uh, Even More Keys to the City. It's another 61 ideas um, on how to solve problems important to the middle class and those struggling to make it. Uh, just about every day on the campaign, I've been positing the idea that campaigns are an opportunity to give citizens a sense of how you think about problems, how you deal with challenges. Many of you have been alongside as we've talked about things like enhancing the role of nonprofit organizations talk about the ways we get uh, non-public schools more actively involved in conversations and tweet, talking about things like tax policy, how we make sure that people who take care of seniors at home have the benefits that they need. Well, today we're putting out another a bunch of ideas. Now it'll be 125, and we're going to continue the pace and even accelerate it in the final days leading up to the primary. You may need to hold the thing. It's one of the ideas that I hope to get in my third idea book is a windproof easel, so stay tuned for that. Um, I want to make something very clear. You know, this decision to run a campaign based on ideas is because I think that Democrats, because we haven't won for the last 24 years, sometimes I think we haven't deserved to win. Frankly, I think that too often we've been running very old-fashioned campaigns that are stuck in a place that maybe worked in the 70s and 80s, but don't work today. Simply having more and more events where you put on another organization's sweater or you stand next to another politically connected figure or another famous person might have been the way we elected mayors in, in the 1970s or 60s, but it's not the way we do things in the year 2013. I'm making another calculation, and that is very simply that if citizens want someone who is already part of the city elite, someone who basically is part of the challenges that created the challenges that we're in today, got a controller, a former controller, a speaker, a, uh, a public advocate, you've got plenty of choices. But if you want someone who comes from a different direction, I'm here for them. So this book is uh, is a little bit more about that. I'm going to highlight just a couple of the ideas and then you're going to see in the days to come, this is going to be the platform from which I talk about more of them. Uh, for example, idea number 82, hire former cops for parade and festival barrier duty. We see this all the time. We see that police officers with badges, very often uh, very often with guns as well, are going out and rather than patrolling the streets, they're setting out the barriers, the bicycle racks that are being used in parades. This is not an unimportant job. You've got to know how to set them up. You've got to know what to look for while you're there. But I think it's something that former cops can do is we can civilianize the police officers and the police force and have these cops be out doing, uh, doing other things. Another idea, bring back the barn stands. The, perhaps the most dangerous place to be, particularly if you're a senior citizen when you're a pedestrian, is in the crosswalk where you have the walk signal. The reason is, turning traffic, coming and going um, in your path, very often leads pedestrians to let their guard down. The barns dance was something that was done years ago that I might have a modified version of it. Basically, if the walk signal for a few extra seconds to pedestrians in both directions, lets them cross in the direction they want, and then releases the vehicular traffic unencumbered by pedestrians. A third idea that we're just highlighting, and just a summary on uh, just a, a quick menu of some that are in here, is take our vehicle's fuel, fleet and increase by 30% the, the fuel efficiency. We have some, uh, some cars in the parks department that are electric. We have some hybrid cars. I don't know what the future will bring, but I think it's reasonable to say, let's set a high goal that our, our vehicle fleet, which is very large, increase fuel efficiency 30% in the next five years. And finally, grab and go hallway food stands and schools. You know if you've been following this campaign, I talked a great deal about hunger and the fact that it is one challenge that clearly we can solve in the city. One of the challenges that we have is that child hunger is high um, and many of the programs that we have to combat it have a stigma attached to them. That's certainly the case with school breakfast and school lunches. 
one of the ways to reduce that stigma is to have hallway food stands that might be evocative of a hot dog stand where you have breakfast in the morning that students can grab and go to their classroom. You have fresh fruit throughout the day. The idea is this is a program that is funded entirely by the federal government. And it's simply wrong that we should have hundreds of thousands of children to go to bed every night hungry. This is a problem that we can solve. So keys to the city, or even more keys to the city, that brings our idea tab uh, um, list to 125. Whether you like these ideas or not, I hope to get a conversation started, and I'll be glad to have uh, a conversation with all of you in the form of any questions you may have. Why did you decide to release these ideas now as opposed to your original book? I had too many of them. I didn't, I didn't think that you could handle all 25 at once, 125 at once. Um, frankly, a lot of these I've actually mentioned from time to time. Some of these I've mentioned from time to time. But um, as they say, as they say in some places, I got a million. Is there going to be another book to think about later? Maybe, maybe. You know, we're we're going to give you a quiz on this one, and if you do well enough, maybe we'll issue it. It's not. existed in this city. You know, when I spoke about a, a need for a single-payer health care plan, many people responded with different degrees of, well, you can't really do that, it's been going on forever. Even the mayor in his budget talks about non-controllable costs. But that doesn't mean that these things are insignificant. Um, they're, they're all important, but um, I think I'm capable of doing bigger thoughts and smaller thoughts in the same campaign. How would you get the permission from the MTA? What, what would you do as mayor to make them? No, we have to. Well, you, you. Well, how would I make the MTA? Well, one of my ideas here is, and I, it's a repeat that I proposed in 2005 that the city get a voting control of the MTA as an intermediate step to getting rid of the MTA altogether. Um, but obviously, we do, until I get rid of the MTA, I'm going to have to work with them. Any words for this? But I think that it's just a different approach. I think they come from a different place. I think to some degree they are high bound to, to, to the, the environment that they came up in. I think that you can read a lot of my remarks in, my, in the outline, in the introduction rather, that I wrote, I wrote to this document about how I think that politics is, and, and governance and the city of New York has changed under their feet and they might not realize it yet. Um, I, however, believe that the kind of campaign that I'm waging is one that citizens honor. It's, it's one that's being run in Washington. It's one that's being run around the country. Mayor, you know, the mayoralities of cities is a place where ideas are happening. Um, I'm not sure that, you know, I'm sure that people used to, you know, to, in, may still in some corners stand up and say, I want to know what my tribe is doing or what my union is doing or what my neighbor is doing or what some famous person I saw on TV is doing. But I really think many, many more people are saying, what are his ideas for education? What are his ideas for health care? What are his ideas for some of these tough and tractable problems? Any, uh, any words from the man who lost the man? Let me, let, me do, let me do people who actually follow the campaign. What are your ideas? Yes, sir.
Well, more importantly, I can tell my police officers and my police commissioner that's not a priority for this administration. Let's face it, one of the reasons why so many stops has happened is because officers ask people to go into their pockets and take out what they have. Once that small amount of marijuana is out and being shown, they can be arrested. That's a waste of resources in my view. I think it damages lives. Very rarely do you, do you catch a master criminal that way. And I think that, that all it is is creating more tension. So I would tell my police commissioner, not don't do your job, but frankly, that, not, that is not going to be a priority of my administration. Mr. Leathers, one of the women, um, women that you were corresponding with. Um, let, me, let, me, let me just do people who are following the campaign. Seriously. I'm following it very seriously. Yes, sir. Back to, to the um, police camera. We'll do off top, uh, off top of it. Back to the question of police cameras. Sure. Do you think that the footage would be um, allowable in court to be used to prosecute if that works? Uh, so then, if, some, if somebody saw something that was, you know, not just that was happening on these cameras for them, would they be able to kind of use that to defend themselves? I, I imagine that the, the contention is the police officer would be able to use that information to make it clear that he had done everything according to the book. The brass of the police officer would use it for training. Here's something that we observed. Here's how this could have been handled differently. People who are stopped and whether there'll be documentation if they believe that they were treated unfairly. It is akin to having a recording of a crime scene of, of a of a interview when someone's arrested. It gives more information uh, and that information I think ultimately will have a good influence on the process. I think having more in now as far as the the legal constitutional precepts of like how it could be used and how uh, legally in a courtroom, I don't know, I'm I'm, I'm not a criminal lawyer but I think the answer is it would be what I would do.